As we begin the month of May, which we're just, I think, two days in now, and our nation's observance of Older Americans Month, I come to the floor today to speak on a topic that is very close to my heart, and that's Alzheimer's disease. Like so many Americans, I have felt the impact of this disease. I lost both of my parents to Alzheimer's disease really pretty close at the same time. And our family, my brother and my sister, and me help to care for them. And I understand the difficulties that caregivers and families have as they're trying to figure out how to face this difficult challenge because this disease is devastating, especially to the patients and their loved ones. My father passed away in January of 2015, just one day after I was sworn in as a United States Senator. My mother, Shelley, passed away just a few months before him in September of 2014. There is not a book that has been written yet that can tell you what to do when a loved one is diagnosed because each case is different and there's no magic formula. But I feel strongly that we can do much more to help our caregivers, to ease the pain of those who suffer from this disease, and most importantly, to find a cure. The statistics surrounding Alzheimer's are staggering. Over 5 million Americans are living with the disease, and it's estimated that as many as 16 million will have the disease by 2050 if medical breakthroughs do not slow or better yet cure this disease. My home state of West Virginia, over 38,000 West Virginians are currently living with the disease, and these are just the ones that we know about. A lot of these cases go undiagnosed or they unreported. Across the country, nearly one in every three seniors who dies each year has Alzheimer's or another type of dementia. The cost of caring, and this is not the emotional cost, this is the actual dollar cost of caring for those with Alzheimer's and other dementia is also notable. An estimated $277 billion in 2018, increasing to $1.1 trillion by the year 2050. These numbers make it clear that we have very much work we need to do for those living with the disease, for those caring, and for the many who face a future diagnosis. Over the past few months, I've taken some first steps to address needs facing each of these groups. Fortunately, this is not a task I am working on alone. As I said, almost everybody's touched by this disease, and I have great bipartisan partners to work with. Last month, I joined Senators Stabenow, Wicker, and Menendez to introduce the CHANGE Act. This bipartisan legislation encourages early assessment and diagnosis of Alzheimer's. It seeks to utilize better the Welcome to Medicare initial exam and annual Medicare wellness visits to screen, detect, and diagnose Alzheimer's and related dementias in their earliest stages. It also establishes payment measures to incentivize detection, diagnosis, and discussion of appropriate care planning services, including the potential for clinical trial participation. Now, let's be honest here, a conversation along these lines on this topic is very difficult. Early assessment and diagnosis offer the important possibility to the patient to be able to be involved in decisions regarding their own care involve the people before they can no longer make that decision for themselves. I, I, wish, I'd, I wish I'd been able to do that. I wish I'd, I tried, but I wasn't able to kind of get that answer that I was hoping for. That's a goal that Senator Stabenow, Collins, Markey, Menendez, and I had when we championed the Hope for Alzheimer's Act back in the 114th Congress. And it's a goal we achieved in 2016 when the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services announced that Medicare would begin to pay for an individual care plan for newly diagnosed Alzheimer's patients, effectively Im implementing our legislation. This new benefit went into effect in the year 2017. It encourages doctors to give a clear diagnosis to patients with Alzheimer's disease. That includes information about treatment options and what medical and community services are available. So here's the rub. Unfortunately, in 2017, less than 1% of seniors living with Alzheimer's actually received the care planning benefit that was created in the Hope for Alzheimer's Act. So our bipartisan team regathered, as I, as I mentioned. Th these are not easy conversations. They're not easy for family. They're not easy for medical professionals. 
And in late March, we introduced the Improving Hope Act. This bill would require the Department of Health and Human Services to conduct outreach to make sure that our health care providers are aware of this important benefit and to report back on rates of utilization and barriers that we need to know about. Hopefully, this will help ensure more Alzheimer's patients and their families actually receive this benefit, as well as the information it's intended to provide. It's also important to remember that while many living with Alzheimer's are in their later years, like my parents were, there are also more than 200,000 Americans under the age of 65 that are living with Alzheimer's. I've met several that are in the early stages, and it's, it's, it's a difficult uh, disease at any time, but for a younger person, it's tremendously sad. These individuals and their families also need access to support and services that most their age don't require or don't need. To make sure they have access, I recently joined Senator Collins, Casey, and Jones to introduce the Younger Onset Alzheimer's Disease Act. This bill will amend the Older American Act to allow individuals under the age of 60 who are diagnosed with younger onset Alzheimer's disease to access its support programs. Under current law, only those over the age of 60 are eligible for Older American Act programs, leaving Americans with younger onset Alzheimer's without access to vital programs and services. The Younger Onset Alzheimer's Disease Act would address this disparity. And it would ensure that these individuals have access to things like nutritional services, supportive services, and respite care through the National Family Caregiver Support Program. Of course, it is also essential that while we continue working toward a cure, that we continue to work towards a cure for this heartbreaking disease. As a member of the Senate Appropriations Committee, I've worked with Labor, Health, and Human Services Subcommittee Chairman Blunt and others to provide resources for crucial Alzheimer's research. In fact, with the passage of the Labor H bill last year, we surpassed the $2 billion milestone when it comes to Alzheimer's research. That means that we're making sure that NIH has the funding it needs to continue its work and to help the support the work of others. I was recently very proud to welcome to West Virginia Dr. Marie Bernard. She's the Deputy Director of the National Institutes of Aging at NIH. She came to West Virginia University where we visited the Rockefeller Neurosciences Institute, which will be opening soon, actually in about 10 days, I think. We spent the day learning more about the innovative and groundbreaking work being done there. And Dr. Bernard shared with the Institute's faculty, students, and staff the opportunities that increased funding can offer to this field of research at West Virginia University. It's easy to get discouraged when you hear about a once promising clinical trial not moving forward. The news was, it was just in the news like two weeks ago where uh, they were moving forward with the clinical trial with medication and they had to stop the trial because they weren't getting satisfactory results. Or when we learn another person we know has been diagnosed with the disease. Or when a cure really does seem so far away. But hearing the passion in Dr. Bernard's voice for the work she has dedicated her life to, and seeing the excitement and hope in the eyes of the students who listen to her and the young researchers, well, that was proof to me that we are making progress, and an illustration of the will and determination that exists to continue making progress. Well, I share that will and determination, and I will continue to work for the day when a patient and their families can more easily receive an early assessment and diagnosis. For the day when following such a diagnosis, they routinely receive an individual care plan to help guide them. For the day when the Alzheimer's patients of all ages are able to access the Older Americans Act support services. But best yet, of course that day when we can celebrate the first person cured of Alzheimer's disease. I think of this as a mission for me in loving memory of both of my parents who fought hard through the diagnosis. But in the end, for those of you who've been exposed to this through your own families, it's a losing battle and a sad battle and a tough battle, an emotionally and financially draining battle. So I look forward to working with my colleagues to make all of this and so much more a reality of those living with Alzheimer's and those who care and love them. Thank you. I yield the floor.